Hello everybody and welcome to part 7 of creating custom content management systems using PHP and MySQL. And we're showing the bare bones and the foundation of how to build the system sort of like Joomla or WordPress but at a very basic level to give you ultimate control over layout and design of the site. Alrighty, so when we last left off we had created the back end so let's go and log in and as I said in the intro to this series I might change things, I might change my mind on what to show so I have in fact changed a few things on my own and I'll be discussing a few of the things that I added and because I have to move on to other projects so I'm going to just release the source code for the whole thing I finished it all up uh, the basics for it anyway and you guys can expand upon it from there if you're somebody looking for a, a full robust system go get Joomla or WordPress this is, system is for learning how to build something like Joomla or WordPress from scratch and then expanding it on your own okay so let's press admin and let's go ahead and log in the terminator and goobernuts is the password and i'm going to i'm going to put the the username and password over here on the side or on top or on the bottom somewhere maybe to where anybody can log in and test and use the system sort of like a sandbox an open sandbox for anybody to use that way they can see how it works before they go through the steps of learning it all okay so let's log in now and so what I changed on the admin homepage is let's see I changed uh, this from a form into a regular link so when you press create new page this is where we last left saw, le last left left oh my god <laughs> tongue tied this is where we last left off was we said we were going to create the the page that created new pages in the system I don't know what's wrong with me my brain's retarded today I am retarded today okay so if I press create new page I can just go ahead and create a page I put a uh, sample page that's the full title let's just make that the link label too let's give that uppercase and this is sample data create page now operation completed successfully click here takes them back to the admin home page and they can view live site by clicking this link there you see there it is sample page this is sample data and I also have a few other pages I think I'm just going to lay it out like this. So if you guys want to come and test the system out, make a little question like what is JavaScript and then explain it. I put in what is CMS. I just grabbed some data from Wiki real quick. But I'm going to put my own custom data in there from what I think CMS is and describe it myself with my own custom copy so I'm not plagiarizing from another site. And uh, so yeah, if you want to make a page, it says you know what is HTML, what is CSS, what is JavaScript, what is all about web dorky stuff. That's what I want here on this sandbox. So if you're gonna test it out, give me some u useful information. How about that? <laughs> and uh, all right, so we go back to admin. What we also have added in is edit existing page. So let's go see the ID of the page that I just created sample page let's click that up here it says PID equals 11 okay so we know that page is 11 so we just go edit existing page we put in place ID of the page to be edited here is 11 then press edit existing page if I try to press that button without putting in a number watch what happens please enter the ID number for the page to be edited that nice JavaScript function come up or JavaScript alert um, 11 and there it is the full title the link label and you can edit it right here now so I'll say what is Ajax what is Ajax info on Ajax goes here 
Alright, so when I press submit edit, operation completed successful, click here, view live website, bada bing bada boom. What is Ajax? Info on Ajax goes here. So you can see how powerful and easy this is to use. It's very nice. Okay, so let's discuss the create new page functionality. I changed it from a button to a link, so it's just a regular link that goes to createpage.php, which is right here. And what that has in it is the admin check once again. We want to make sure they're logged in as admin. And then we have a JavaScript function in the head here that validates the form fields, the three fields in the form. So if we go to design view, we see that there's one, two, three fields. And if they happen to be empty and somebody presses submit, we give them a little alert that lets them know. So for instance, if I go to admin, create new page, and I just press create this page now. See? Please enter the page title. Okay. I enter a title. Please enter the info for the link label. Okay. And so on and so forth. Until they get all the data in and stop being retarded. Because we, we tell them from the get go be sure to fill in all fields because they are required. So if they happen to miss something, bing, they get in the alert. Okay. So that's what happens there for the form and this form is set to here is where you run that function on submit return validate form that's the name of that function validate form and let's see what else do we do here we're submitting this to page new parse.php and that's a script that's going to update the mysql database add this new page and pretty much complete the operation at hand. So that's pretty much all we need to talk about in that create page. It's very simple. You can see it's just a form with a button and the JavaScript alerts if they miss something. But if they get everything in, they press submit, it goes to this page. Right here we grab the posted variables from the form and we put them in local PHP variables. And here I showed you a nifty little uh, method of creating a custom function that you can send these variables to that will filter them. So instead of writing out a whole bunch of lines when you're doing your filtration systems for your forms, uh, you can send each variable to a universal filter system, which is my filter function here. You can filter them any way you need to. And I send all three right here through that function. The page title goes through, the link label goes through, and then the page body goes through. And it comes out right here is where you send them and it comes out filtered into these local PHP variables. So then you can use those in your inserts to your MySQL database without worrying. <clears throat> and let's see and I, I convert to uh, HTML special chars so I don't have to worry about uh, tags they get converted and any malicious code any hack attempts are being thwarted by using HTML special chars in conjunction with these two custom Eric replaces on single quote and tilde marks and then here we just connect to the database after everything's filtered we connect to our database and then we just run the MySQLi query we're using MySQLi throughout this series which is an improved version of the MySQL family of functions. So MySQLi error will show up if things are not correct. And ours is all correct. You saw how it worked out nice. Operation successfully completed was echoed to the page and we had a link to our index and that's the end of that script. That's how that whole thing works. Okay. Now I'm going to be wrapping up the source code tonight and making it available because everything's pretty much done. And I'm going to make the last little two videos back to back here and throw them up on YouTube. Everything's going to be finished. I'm putting this project behind me and uh, you guys can fly with it. Now what I've got left to explain are edit existing page, this little form, and the page for that will call the MySQL database to bring in the existing data to be edited. I'll explain that one in part 8. And also the delete page is a very simple little script which I'll also be 
uh, talking line by uh, going through the code line by line for that functionality as well and then part nine there might just be ten parts to this whole series part nine after we explain these two things in part eight in part nine I'll explain JavaScript WYSIWYG editors to put in your instead of having this form field here see this input or this text field this text area input this gets replaced by a JavaScript WYSIWYG editor and that allows people to put in bold underline uh, images links all that good stuff uh, usually all that functionality is in most WYSIWYG editors a nice JavaScript WYSIWYG editor will do it and you can give people more power over the formatting colors sizing fonts whatever they're usually all in, all those features are usually included like when you send an email how you have all those little buttons up there that say underline bold font size color uh, it gives you all those options or it gives your client all those options and a lot of them allow image upload so that's what I'll be talking about in part 9 and then part 10 I might just do some blah 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 about how you can some logic for making the system a little more intuitive and robust or maybe we'll just stop part 9 after I talk about the WYSIWYG because that'll be pretty much everything okay we'll see you in part Yes, part eight, where we'll be explaining the edit existing page functionality and delete page functionality.